Hi guys, it's Brit and Oz here. Uh, filming from Finn's room with Finn here. Can you say hi? Hi. Yeah, he's been my, my producer today. Tell me what to say, what to do. Yeah. So today, guys, we're going to have a bit of a recap of the weekend's rugby. Um, I made a preview video before um, just stating how I thought the games were going to go. And I couldn't have been <laughs> further, I couldn't have been more wrong, to be honest. Um, so we'll start with the New Zealand, start with the, the New Zealand Ireland game. I had New Zealand winning this twenty to thirty points. They won their last seventeen games. They, they were they've been playing some amazing rugby lately. Obviously, amazing and and they blitzed the, the rugby championship. And I just didn't see anyone in this tour getting near them. Ireland turned it on its head in in the first in the first week. 40 points on them, so it's 40 29 in the end, and blew them away. Five tries, um, brilliant first time in the history that they've beaten the All Blacks. And you know, they've got them again in two weeks' time, and it'll be very interesting to see how that goes in Dublin. Um, not taking anything away from Ireland's incredible victory. I think, I think the All Blacks made a couple of changes to their side, maybe had a few guys on the bench at start, kind of tinkered with their forward pack a little bit, but look. Still, New Zealand is such a good, strong outfit that they um that they can put out world class teams again and again and again. Even their third string team is going to be world class. Um, moving to the game in Cardiff, we had Wales up against uh, Australia. I had Wales winning this by three. Um, Australia, Australia showed up and they played very very well. Wales just didn't didn't turn up. It's very very dis disappointing. Wales would have earmarked this as the game that they could win. They've seen they've seen England go down, come down to Australia and belt them three 0 in the series and pinpointed this as the game that they could win. It hasn't gone that way. They'll be very disappointed they couldn't put this game to bed. They could have finished the hoodoo. I'm not sure what it is. I don't know what's going on with Wales against these sort of teams. Um, but they'll never... Something needs to change. And whether that's coaching set up, I'm not sure. In terms of playing personnel, they've got some amazing players, some of the best players in the world. So you've either got to think it's... You've just got to think maybe a game plan and, and also there's a bit of a psyche behind it. And, you know, whether or not they feel they can beat these teams... This Australian team is a team they can beat. They should, you know, maybe should have beaten them. You know, the Australian rugby at the moment is a bit of a crossroads. Not really too sure which direction they're going in. You know, it's a little bit of a mess from the top down Australian rugby. And you know, Wales would be very, very disappointed. They, they, they couldn't, they couldn't win this one. Onwards and upwards for Wales, I think. Um, third game, a bit of a side note. South Africa played the Barbarians. At Wembley, Barbarians always draw a crowd. They play an amazing brand of rugby. You know, it's always great to watch them. When they play international teams, you think it's a bit of a gimme. They're always high scoring. They're they're always high scoring. That um and the you 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 back the international teams to beat the Barbarians nine times out of ten. The Springbok we've. Disappointed they came away with draw from this game. They really will. They were. You can imagine they're hoping for this to be a springboard for the rest of their tour. Um, so you know, we'll have to wait and see. It's, that's. I think it's been typical of South African rugby now for the last sort of twelve months, on and off, hot and cold. Can they? Can't they? Um, but I think you know this tour will be a real will be a real test for them. So we're going to look into the games being played next weekend. Um, first up, we've got the All Blacks. Now, the All Blacks are going to be playing with a point to prove. They're going to be gunning for it. They, I would not want to play these guys today because they are going to massacre whoever they come across. And this week is going to be Italy. They have Italy and Rome. I would not want to be in the Italian team this week because they are going to get bulldozed. It's going to be, it's going to, it's going to get rough, and I'm thinking it's going to be 60, 70 points rough. <clears throat> you know, the All Black 
uh, the New Zealand public expect the All Blacks to win the majority of games and they are going to be gunning for Italy this weekend and Italy have been poor of late they've been in the Six Nations for going on 16 years now and they've not progressed how you'd want them to progress they've always been in the sort of lower echelon of the Six Nations you know they celebrate when they get a sort of single victory they've been in France a few times they've been in Wales they've been in Scotland but it's never that consistent basis, and they have those consistent wins. And for Italy, it's it's down to their domestic leagues. It's down to the fact they've only got two teams in um, in the Pro 12, which just doesn't help them. It really doesn't help them. Um, you know, and then they've what they do also is they've they they have stopgap um, Australians and Kiwis. I think maybe one or two South Africans with some Italian heritage and uh, fill some of the other positions and they're not even world class stop gaps they're, they're just guys that are sort of thrown in there and you've got to feel for their one or two world class players like preset that they do have you know these guys tr- try every single time they pull that shirt on they give it everything unfortunately they just haven't got the support around them I really hope that rugby in Italy progresses and grows because it's uh, it could be a real hotbed I've actually toured in Italy um, an under eighteen school tour, and it was tough going. These guys, are, these guys are hard. They were pretty skillful as well, um, but unfortunately, I'm not sure if the coaching setups there further along the line. I don't think they've got enough um, good club coaches. Hopefully, hopefully that will change in the future with funding. Um, so moving, oh yeah, that game, Italy to lose by sixty or seventy points. Yeah, um, England, South Africa. <clears throat> England have had injuries. Uh, they picked a few injuries in their latest training camp and playing wrestling, judo, and that kind of stuff. And they lost some guys up front, and that's exactly where you need to match the South Africans. South Africans are probably the most physical team in the world, in the world of rugby. They they just keep going and going and going and going. And every South African that I've played with or against, they, they're just hard as nails. They're tough. Um, so I'm really hoping that England can pull a result from this one. South Africa, as I said before, just hot and cold. I'm not sure if there's any if there's things going on behind the scenes in South African rugby, or whether or not they just haven't got the player base. Whether or not they're playing for their coach, I don't know. Um, Eddie Jones, on the other hand, the England coach, he's been very, very good for English rugby. They've they've improved massively since he's taken over from Stuart. Lancaster um, and they're playing some good rugby and the players are bought into the culture he's created and he's and he developed competition in all the key areas which you can only praise England have got injuries I think Anthony Watson might be out he's probably England's best wide player question mark of a fullback whether or not Mike Brown is still the best you're Alex Goode breathing down his neck for that 15 jersey Alex Goode's playing for the most consistently most consistent Team in the Premiership, Saracens, and he's one of their best players. Mike Brown, solid. I think two years ago he hit his peak, and since then he sort of plateaued out. And <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not too sure about how how much longer he can carry on. Um, I think England will win it. It'll be close, five to seven points in it. I think it's not going to be a classic game. I don't think it'll be classic. I think it'll be a tight battle up front. Um, England will, I think they'll match South Africa up front and hopefully they have a bit too much out wide, depending on what sort of team they, they pick. I'm a bit worried if they pick Farrell at 10, and f- or f- uh, forward at 10 and Farrell at 12. Two very lightweight players. They they tackle, they make their tackles. Farrell is fearless. <clears throat> but when you've got, 100 plus kilo South Africans running at your channel all day and they will come all day. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the right the right option to have those two guys. I think a little bit of horses for courses. Maybe you pick, I don't know if there's a big enough 12, Luther Burrell from Northampton, maybe stick him in at 12. I'm not sure A. Jones is a massive fan of him. He hasn't really played him too much, but maybe he's an option at 12, gives you a bit of bulk. 
And then you've got Jonathan Joseph at 13, who I think he'll do a job, whoever he's playing against. Um, and then you've got, yeah, and then maybe stick Farrell at, Farrell at 10. I would love to see Henry Slade feature in this series at some point. The guy's, the guy's a freak. He's maybe not playing the best for Exeter at the moment. Exeter is sort of performing under par as a team as a whole, but the guy is so skillful. He's, uh, so, he's so skillful. He's got all the time in the world. So hopefully he'll appear at some point. Um, moving on, Scotland against Australia at Murrayfield. Scotland have been Australia's kind of bogey team at times in the last couple of years. They beat them at Murrayfield and it was chucking them down the rain. It's fairly close, but they beat them. And Scotland then also beat Australia in Newcastle in Australia a few years ago when they were on tour. Um, Judging from what we've seen from Australia last week and judging from how Scotland have been lately, Australia, I don't think they'll have too many problems being Scotland. Again, Scotland's just inconsistent, inconsistent at the international level. They've got some good domestic, they've got Edinburgh and Glasgow at uh, domestic level who've been very successful in their respective competitions. But they're just inconsistent. They haven't got the strength and depth either. Um, Australia to win this probably 15 points, I think. Um, okay, so there's another one. France are playing Samoa in Toulouse. Now, if you underestimate Samoa, that will hurt you physically. They'll batter you. And on the scoreboard, they'll put points on you. They've got try scorers. They play at Brown and Rugby where anyone in their team can score a try at any moment. France are bonkers. They're they're just they're just nuts. Those guys <laughs> and they will produce anything, anything. One week they'll play like they can beat the All Blacks, and next week they'll play like they can lose to Georgia. And that's that's been France, I think, since the, since rugby began. Um, it's very difficult to predict what they what they're going to bring to the table. You know what Samoa are going to bring? They're going to bring ferocity in the tackle. They can hit you as hard as they can. They're going to run it from anywhere. So uh, this is a very difficult game to predict. And I would not be surprised if Samoa came out with this game with a result. I really wouldn't. I just have to see what sort of France turns up. You know, France could... It will either be France winning by 40 or it would be Samoa winning by 10. I don't know what's going to happen in that one. What's going to happen? Um... Next up for Wales is Argentina. It doesn't get any easier for Wales. Argentina are, are a good side. Very passionate, very strong up front. Very strong pack. Um, Wales need to step up. They need to they need to buck up their ideas a bit, otherwise they're going to get beaten twice in a row. And Argentina, yeah, they'll look at it and they'll see Argentina's team that they should be beating, particularly at home. Argentina, and the rugby, they've been in the Rugby Championship in the Southern Hemisphere for a couple of years. They're getting better. They're playing those top tier teams much more often, not just at World Cups. They're playing them every year now. Um, they've got they've got a domestic policy, a, po- a policy. So a lot of these guys are playing together in Argentina, and it just strengthens them. They're playing the Super Rugby, so they, they, they've got they've got experience against the top players week in week out. So they're no longer the team which just which are the freaks at the World Cup. They are the team. They're the team that. Uh, that will hopefully become much more consistent. Uh, this one, I'm not going to predict a winner on this one because I don't. I honestly, I can't pick it. If Wales don't, if Wales don't show up, Argentina will beat them. I don't know what kind of Argentinian team is going to rock up. Um, yeah, I can't pick this one. Okay, <clears throat> last up, we've got Ireland against Canada. Um, in Dublin, um, it's really good to see teams like Canada touring. Um, you know they're playing against these sort of higher tier nations. It's good. It's good for them. It's good for the game. And Canada are not a bad team. You know they're not up there with Ireland, but they're not bad. Ireland, I feel, will make a lot of changes. They'll make a lot of changes. They'll be coming back from Chicago. It's a big, big trip back. They've got New Zealand again next week. 
they'll be thinking about that. There will be lots of sore bodies. Um, I think can think they'll they'll make wholesale changes for this game that they will win easily. No matter how many changes that they make, they'll beat Canada easily. They'll rest a lot of their guys. Um, it gives the opportunity to some others who might not get else get looking. This will be forty. 50 points, I, th I think Canada won't put up too much of, an, of a, a resistance, it's not even against a second string Ireland team. Um, okay, so I just want to delve into the English schedule a little bit for the autumn, being English is kind of interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm kind of throwing all the teams really, but you know, being English is sort of, so makes them my sort of number one really. So we say we, they've got, they've got, um, They've got Stafka this weekend. Next weekend, they've got Fiji. Fiji a lot like Samoa. You underestimate them. They can hurt you. Hopefully, Fiji... Hopefully, their team can take some take some influence and take some pride out of what their Sevens counterparts have done when they get Olympics. They can piggyback off that, um, get some confidence from it. And hopefully, we won't, we won't see the, out, the, the, the kind of blowouts that we've seen in the past. Fiji just need they need more funding, and they you know they, if they get that, they will they will start to compete very regularly at World Cups, and rather than make sort of qualifying the quarterfinals their own, it'll be semi finals. I love to watch Fiji play. They hit hard. They play such an entertaining brand of rugby. It's, it's fantastic. England then have Argentina. I spoke about Argentina. I spoke about their strengths. If Argentina stick to their systems and play the passion that we know they play with, they will cause England problems. Um, at scrum time, England have got to get it right. The line have got to get it right. They've got to match in for physicality. They've got to match in for the passion that the, Argent that the Argentinians play with. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a banana skin for England, this, this game, because it is one that could get away from them. Um, and finally, they wrap it up with Australia come into town Australia will be out for vengeance after what happened in the summer it's, it's four weeks off so it's a bit hard to kind of say what's going to happen with injuries and form and that kind of thing um, by then the Australians might have sort of one eye on coming home hopefully in a way <laughs> give England a bit of a bigger chance England they can't rest on their laurels in this game. They know they've got the upper hand probably psychologically having gone down to Australia and beaten three times. Saying that they need to make sure they are remain switched on or it's gonna you know, it could be on its head and Australia could come away with a bit of a victory. Um but yeah, it'd be interesting. I'll make another video closer to time with uh, with my predictions on that. Um and yeah. Plenty more games to come. You know, I'll make another video in the week with the results from this week. Uh, with from this weekend, hopefully I'll be a bit more accurate than I was last night because I've got I'm not from two at the moment, so I've got to make up some ground. Anyway, guys, I will catch you on the flip side.